Hi, I'm Carl, and welcome back to LARP Legion. So, um, as you may know, if you're going to Biko, it's coming up real quick. And for some people, it's their first Biko ever. And you may be coming from overseas, just another province, another country. Like if you're coming in from the US, it can really suck to get to Biko and realize that you forgot something that you just didn't think about because you haven't lived Biko or any week-long LARP event because a week-long LARP event versus a weekend one is a completely different game especially since Biko is more of a festival LARP rather than a roleplay LARP so that opens up a whole can of worms regarding what you need to bring so this video is going to be meant as a not necessarily a full complete list of like camping stuff and everything like that but maybe just little items that you may have not thought about bringing this list was compiled by the help of the Bikaden community, which is helpful as always. So I will be putting little names here and there up above when someone gave that suggestion. Not the full name, of course, for privacy reason, but let's just get on with the list. This list will be separated in three sections, which you can click through on the play bar. It's gonna be first gear for your character that you're gonna be wearing around that's can that can be very useful for you. Camping stuff, so well, just like more camp stuff, anything that could help enhance your camping experience or just make your tent look better or just life in general and your tent for a week be better. And the third one is just gonna be life stuff just to make sure that you're doing great and that you're comfortable while spending the week at Nico. Let's get on with it. First up at Biko, there is a lot of drinking that happens. There is a lot of drinking, but also they have water spots around Biko that you can fill in your mug or whatever at. But the thing is, if you're carrying a mug around, you can either one, forget it somewhere, two, lose it, or three, you're just gonna be bothered carrying it around everywhere. So what you can get is a little carabiner that you can put around your belt so that you can clip your mug on it. That way it just hangs on your belt and you don't have to worry about it. Which brings me to the second point, a belt. Bring a belt to Biko that you can tie a bunch of things on it. It really enhances a kit to have a belt. It breaks the different sections from your kit, adds a bit more layering, but it also allows you for a bit more hands-free movement with all your dangly bits. Which also brings me to the third item. Bring pouches for your belt. It's not like you're going to festival, a music festival in real life or anything like that. So putting stuff in your pocket is not recommended at all. Not recommended at all. If you lose something at Biko, there's a good chance that you're never gonna find it again and that no one else is ever gonna find it again depending where you misplace it. So having little pouches on you is amazing. First for your money, your real money, you can put, I mean, don't really bring your cell phone around at Biko, but like if you have a condition that makes it so that you kind of have to carry it around just for safety purposes, it's better to have it in a pouch rather than a back pocket. And also just the pockets are gonna make your kid look better. So why not bring more pockets, pouches, and whatever, you know? Then we have, if you're gonna be eating at Biko, you can have their little uh, plastic utensils and everything, but you know, nature is struggling. We are messing it up. So how about you bring yourself a decorum set of dining material, utensils, a wooden bowl, go to the thrift store. Go to the thrift store, you can easily find a wooden bowl that you can just bring to Biko. They're super easy to clean too. And not only is it gonna be better for the environment, but it's gonna make your experience a bit better because you're gonna be like, ooh, I'm eating like the peasants. So you know, it's the little things, the little things. Oh, hello, Leo, talking about little things. Get out of here. Now, a thing at Biko that a lot of people don't think about and I honestly, can kind of ruin your week is not having gloves, especially if you're gonna be fighting. You might be used to fighting at your LARP event for like 
a few minutes at a time when there's an engagement that starts. But the beagle battles often last for hours on end in the heat, which makes it so that your skin is gonna be very moist and what is moist may never dry, but also it's more prone to blister or skin breaking out or splitting. So having gloves to fight is a huge game changer. Now, there's a thing at Biko that we tend to always have <laughs> one big thunderstorm or a big rainstorm. So what is recommended is to bring some sort of waterproof cloak or hood or anything really that can protect you from the rain. Because if it rains at Biko, you don't just want to be like, oh, well, I guess it's raining. I'm just going to stay in my tent and do, just blow my tongues. No, it, it's part of the fun to walk around Biko in the rain. So bring yourself a waterproof cloak or a waterproof hood. They're actually super easy to waterproof if you buy the right material. I'll put some resources down below if you don't know how to do so. So that way you have a little way to do it yourself if you're not aware. But also talking about ways to cover yourself, bring a hat because sunscreen is always recommended and will do the job for the most part. But if you're standing in the sun for seven days a week, it, it's not going to be perfect. So honestly, especially with my chrome dome now that I have no air, you do want to bring a hat. Just it's nice to also have the extra shade because sometimes it's not necessarily protecting your skin, but it's also like it can get pretty tiring to be straight in the sun with nothing on your end. So, you know, bring a little hat, your noggin will be thankful. Now, earlier I mentioned bringing a water mug to be able to drink at Biko. Honestly, water skin. Bring a water skin, a water bottle, some kind that you can tie on yourself. Especially if you're going to fight, there will be people that give you water on the battlefield, but often they'll have like a mug that they keep filling. And with the Great Plague, I haven't seen you since the plague. I'm pretty sure people will not be drinking from the mug. Probably be like uh, tilting it and like catching it in the mouth, but. Don't, don't risk it because even before the Great Plague, there was the Biko Plague, a illness that took all the people without fail just from drinking into those mugs. So just bring your own bottle and then they have their big water jugs. You can ask them to fill your water bottle with it. And it's always better to have your own water source on you so that if you're dead on the battlefield, you can just and drink it and that you're good and you're not uh, dying in the heat. Because sometimes when, when you get down, you just want to lay down for a bit, you know, um, re relax and not get up and uh, regret all your choices that made you choose a hobby that um, involves getting whacked on the head in the sun and then lying in the heat. You know, just a, just a thought. Water is great. Now, talking about combat and safety, a lot of people will tell you, Ooh, you need to wear a helmet at Biko, you need to wear a helmet at Biko. And they are right. Not that you will 100% get hit in the head, but it is legal and it is in a way kind of encouraged because it's part of the game. If you get hit on the head and you don't have a helmet, you're dead right away. I might make a video on Pico Combat if I have time. It's getting a bit short, but if you get hit on the head, you're dead. But the thing is, at a campaign recently, I got hit in the eye with an arrow. And let me tell you what, accident or not, arrow splice quick. And if you don't have anything on your head, you can get hit in the eye socket which could have some long-lasting damage, or at least uh, kind of make your week a bit sucky. So either wear a helmet or buy some of those transparent uh, safety glasses. Just put them on. They're not going to look as good for like your costume and everything, but you want to know what doesn't look as good? Only seeing with one eye. So, you know, uh, choose your battle. Choose your battle. It's a... Uh... Hey there, Editor Carl. I did forget one really useful thing that I will be bringing at Biko, which is a notepad as well as a decorum pen. Uh, the reason for that is you're going to make a lot of friends at Biko. A lot of new faces, a lot of names to remember. So that little booklet is going to be very useful because what you can do is you can write because uh, you can't really grab your phone and like add someone you just met on Facebook or like write down their name. So with that little booklet, you can write their character name as well as their real life name. And then it kind of gives you uh, a nice souvenir of your Biko experience. And you can even use it as kind of a diary too. Because for me, I know that when I come back from Biko, there's so many things that happen that keeping track of everything is near impossible. So having that little booklet really helps keep track of everything. And it's gonna make for a great way 
to be able to find people after we go. Now, on to our camping equipment or camp equipment, just to make, you know, your experience of living in a medieval town, the biggest permanent medieval town in the world, uh, really feel like an experience in itself. Because honestly, that's my favorite part about Biko. Well, one of my favorite parts is to live in that world and to wake up every day in that world. To sleep there, it's just like such a nice feeling. One of the first things, lighting, lanterns. You can even buy those uh, dollar store fairy lights and put them inside your tent. But just find a way to have actual decorum lighting rather than, let's say, you're looking for something at night in your tent. You go to grab your phone, it's a huge white bright flashlight, it goes through the wall of your tent, it's not as fun and also maybe your phone is just dead because like it's Vico so like by the time half week it's probably dead even though you closed it so I have those little lanterns, there's some on Amazon that you can buy that are very great, they might come in time or again you can buy those little fairy lights or even those uh, fake candles at the dollar store, pretty cheap, work well and uh, like they look good. They look good for what they are, honestly. Now, this idea is also from the Pico group, and honestly, a super great one. I didn't have this, but I think I will definitely bring it this year. A bucket, just a bucket for next to your tent so that you can go to a water point, fill it with water, and then use it to clean dishes or um, use it for water for a rag if you wanna clean your face. Just like, it's, it's great to have a water source that's a bit closer rather than having to walk all the time to the water point because depending where your camp is, sometimes it can be a bit far. So, you know, just a little resource, quality of life stuff. Now, duct tape. Duct tape, I mean, it's duct tape. It's perfect for everything. But to have it in your camp is a great resource in case, let's say something happened with your tent or someone breaks something and they need help, duct tape is gonna be a savior and it can really make a situation go from oh wow this is really sucky to a bit of duct tape and you're good to go so you know roll duct tape super cheap put in your bag and if you don't use it you don't use it but if you have it you're probably going to be thankful if something breaks now i said earlier about cell phones dying a battery pack for me for example i have camera stuff that i need to charge for the week i know some people have uh, health conditions that sometimes they need battery equipment for different reasons battery pack you again charge it before you leave put in your bag you don't use it you don't use it perfect but if it's something that you may need it's great to have it in your bag or maybe someone has an emergency and suddenly needs to charge their phone for whatever reason you can be that resource now for sleep sleeping in Biko a lot of people think oh well it's so warm it's in August Biko is gonna be so boiling hot balls because at Biko the nights tend to get very, very cold because of that river that goes through in the middle, which I believe is called the Mouse River, La Rivière Souris. The thing with that river is that when the sun goes down, there's a lot of fog that rises up from that river and just the whole land tends to get much colder at night. And as much as it can get hot during the day, you're gonna be thankful to have that wool blanket to go to sleep at night so that you don't end up freezing, but also just so that you have something to maybe help someone out because it's always a good idea to bring more than one blanket to begin with uh, just in case one of them gets stabbed or anything like that so but wool blanket is definitely a must if you want to be sure to be warm during the night ziploc bags i just mentioned regarding a blanket getting damp other things can get damp or you may just want to make sure that they don't get damp that's where a ziploc bag comes in just throw some in your bag you don't use them you don't use them but it's great to have those you can just stuff things in there that you want to make sure they stay dry during the whole week because sometimes also it's not necessarily just the water from uh, the rain but it just can get so humid sometimes that i've seen the inside of tents <laughs> get covered in water from the, like, the condensation so there's a lot that can happen so those ziploc bags can be some uh, very useful resources in those cases now this is my idea because after the last pico i noticed that Boy oh boy, is it hard to find people at Biko or to be found at Biko. So what I will be doing for my tent is I will be putting a small blackboard at the front. That way what you can do is you can, let's say, write Grog is gone too. Then you can be like the new auberge, the troll ball field. And you can kind of write where you were edited. 
so that if you have friends looking for you or enemies maybe, who knows, you can just write kind of the direction where you were headed. Of course, time is irrelevant at Biko, so no point in writing in time, but you know, just the general location can be a good way to make sure that you find your friends or that your friends find you and that all of you can have the most fun possible while at Biko because sadly Biko is seven days, which is long, but it's also so, so short. Now we will be moving on to life stuff just to make sure that your life in a medieval town is not as miserable as some of our middle-aged great 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 ancestors. So one thing first, I didn't put this in gear because it's not exactly for gear, it's really important for you, just your life in general at Biko. A lot of people I see are going to be wearing boots or very complicated shoes, brain sandals or loafers, the decorum loafers, just so that if you need to go to the bathroom at night and <laughs> the last thing you want to do is be so groggy at night and have it to put on some super long boots or like having to tie them and deal with that, just having sandals is great but not just during the night. If it's really warm, you don't want to have to wear your big boots to walk around. It's fun to just be able to slip on sandals and walk around without a care in the world. So, you know, really think about bringing those. You're going to be thankful. To. Next, for life stuff. So at Biko, they have the payable showers that you can purchase a little card and then use that card to go to the Biko bathroom and showers, which it's worth it. What I do often is I'll buy a few showers to throughout the week properly clean myself here and there. What I will be doing for the most part is washing myself in the river and you gotta use biodegradable soap but a lot of people, there's a new ones there, you need to get some that is river safe because otherwise it's just gonna foam up and then it's gonna come back to the same issue, it's not gonna be great for the environment. Order that, it's gonna be better that way and safer for everyone. Now this one, very important, honestly, a big coat, especially if you're a light sleeper, earplugs, they are a must. Sometimes the music shows can last for a while or just people walking around uh, can be quite noisy. Noise carries quite far at Miko. Having earplugs is a very, very good tool to have. Chuck them in to your ear and then have some great sleep because the thing is, it's Biko, the nightlife is super important and part of it. So you can't expect people to necessarily be quiet. So you gotta work yourself around that and it's super easy to be Next we have uh, bring a bag of clementines or electrolyte caps just because hydration doesn't just rely on water. You may not get everything you need from simply drinking water. So those electrolyte caps, super easy to use. You just chuck them into your water jug or a water mug, drink that and that's really going to make sure that your body gets everything it needs to be able to push through seven days of fighting, partying, singing, you know. The whole shebang. Next we have baby wipes. Baby wipes are a god scent because earlier I mentioned the bucket, hand cloth, but often you'll be <laughs> walking around in the sweltering sun and everything or you, you'll be dusty from just like people walking the path kicks up some dust. Those baby wipes super useful but also if you tend to wear makeup for your costume just you know being able to wipe that off with that is very nice and it's also just sometimes really refreshing to be able to kind of remove all that layer of grease from your face from uh, <laughs> spending so much time outside and doing so much in so little time next up we have something that i mentioned noise earlier and it's kind of linked to it we have advil and tylenols or you know just headache medicine super useful because you really really don't want to be stuck with a headache at Biko. I've seen people be stuck and them going on wild goose chase to try to find um, that medicine for them. So bring extra medicine like that to make sure that everyone has a good headspace for the event. Now this you may think I'm never gonna need this it's never been an issue but it is anti-chafing cream or uh, like a little stick. Honestly, I've had it happen once where my taste chafed and I couldn't walk. It was that bad, but it was just from LARPing so long in the sun and like fighting and just like movement and then my skin was just done for. If you're at Biko and you're there for a week, you don't want to be just be stuck 
have like let's say have that on the Tuesday and then on Wednesday just be out of commission and just be sitting while everyone is having fun because you're just hurting so much. That little cream again you might not need it but you're going to be so thankful if you have it and especially if it gets really humid and hot you are way more likely to chafe that way. Next up we have lip balm. So again a lot of heat, a lot of partying, a lot of not drinking enough water can lead to your lips being completely broken from uh, being too dry and again it's just kind of really sucky to find yourself with dry lips but also you know it's better if you um, go and do extracurricular activities <laughs> to have nice lips those activities being um, drinking of course uh, water from your mug nothing else what were you thinking about Next up we have band-aids but also moleskin bandages. I have some that I got from Lartbox. A lot of my uh, life stuff I've gotten in their little life packs from Lartbox so I'm set for a while thanks to them. Thank you Lartbox and thank you Bart for the equipment. But those little bandages and moleskin are going to be very useful for if you get blisters on your feet. Because honestly, the thing with that is if you have a blister, you're not going to really get to rest it. So you're kind of just going to have to walk on it and make it worse for yourself. And if you're already prone to blisters, you're way better off getting a moleskin bandage in advance to make sure that you're good to go and you're not going to get rubbed. But in that same idea, if you have new boots that you bought from Vico, like uh, hiking boots or whatever, new shoes, wear them a lot before going to Vico. For a week, try to wear that as much as possible to break them in because you're going to be way less prone to blisters, but also you're going to make sure that they're broken in and more comfortable that way before you get to Vico and you find yourself walking with like two cement blocks on your feet that are not soft whatsoever. Now, this is pretty simple, but I've seen people that forgot this, but it's so much more easier to have this. It's a little decorum bag for toiletries, so that if you're going to the river or the showers, sometimes, sometimes, there's always a lineup for the showers. You don't want to be there holding your towel, your soap, your, uh, I mean, my shampoo. You know, I gotta, I gotta keep this, uh, this air on fleek. Um, but you don't want to be a hand of just carrying that in your arms and just standing there. So that little bag, just to be able to have everything in there, not lose it, not forget everything. Quality of life stuff, but again, it's also very useful if you need to go to the showers. You don't have to look everywhere in your tent for it. It's on the same place and easy to find. That was pretty much it for the, I, I think the items that a lot of people will not actually think about. I will put a more complete list that you can click on in the description if you want to really like kind of go checklist situation and go down one by one just to make sure you have everything in time and that you thought about everything but also I would love to know if you have any items that you think I forgot or that I should bring because honestly I'm not a pro and this is why I make this video kind of as a list for myself but as for you as well so if you have any suggestion drop them down in the comments below I would love to make sure that I have everything as well but other than that again like I said earlier might be a little combat tutorial of the Biko combat system just to make sure that we're all safe and uh, so that combat goes as smoothly as possible when we are at Biko so Keep an eye out for that, maybe depending if time permits. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. But I've been Carl. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, like this video if you found it uh, useful or if you would like to see more videos like this. And make sure to subscribe to join the Legion.